Burlesque Stripped Down, episode number six. Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Velvet Eau Claire, as always, your guide to all of the sexy secrets of us, the ladies and gents behind the tassels. I want to thank you so much for tuning in again today. We've had a fantastic opening two weeks of the podcast, and I'm extremely grateful for you taking the time to listen to our podcast and check out the blog and everything like that. It's, It's so appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you are enjoying what you're hearing and what you're seeing over on the blog, please do share us with your friends. Um, Let people know what you're seeing over here and what you're liking. Uh, You can do so on social media, of course. You can do so word of mouth, anything like that. We've got lots of visuals over on the blog, so feel free to share any of those pictures, uh, particularly on things like Pinterest, Instagram, and of course, uh, Twitter and Facebook, the classics. So please do uh, do that. If you are on iTunes and things like that, of course, a subscription, a rating and review would be much appreciated as always. But especially just to kind of let your friends know, we really want to increase like organic traffic and people listening to us um, organically and and giving us feedback and knowing what we can improve and everything. So thank you again so much. Um, if you listened on Monday, we had an awesome episode with a good friend of mine, Miss Polly Pony Girl from uh, my trooper, Les Moulins. And we talked about a lot of really interesting things about uh, what happens sometimes when if you're working with a horse, when things go wrong. And we also talked a lot about inspiration and where to find and how to develop this inspiration for our acts. And that was very much where this episode idea came from. So today we're going to talk about 20 different places that you could possibly find inspiration for your next burlesque act. Now I will say up front that I am not expecting that all 20 of these will be new to you. I am sure that you have thought of at least several of these before. Um, So it might not always be new. My goal with this episode is is to at least give you a few new ideas, something you hadn't thought about before as far as where to go to look for new ideas and new inspiration. So these, these will run the gambit from coming up with new music ideas, costuming ideas, just concept ideas and things like that. Of course, many of us can find inspiration from anything that we do, just from living our daily lives. But sometimes that's not quite enough. So sometimes we need a little extra, some a few extra ideas on where to go, what to look for, and some new sources to inspire us. And that's what I want to get into today. So of course, I do have 20 of them. And I don't want to go too long on this episode. So we will keep each one fairly short. But please, if there's anything that kind of intrigues you or inspires you or gives you a new idea or you want to discuss further, definitely either send me an email, velvet at burlesquestripdown.com, or head over into the show notes for this page, which will be at burlesquestripdown.com slash inspiration. And you can leave a comment there as well. And I would love to, in a future episode or a future blog post, kind of get delve further into a few of these topics. So definitely let me know which ones are intriguing to you, which ones maybe you hadn't thought of before. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this list. We do have 20 of them, so we can't waste too much time. Number one, this may be a bit of a given, but number one, if you are a burlesque artist and you have not checked out some of the really, really classic numbers of burlesque, type in YouTube right now, type in the words classic burlesque numbers or classic burlesque, and watch some of these amazing classic numbers. Uh, performers and classic acts. Of course, you know, I mean, the Dita Von Tees, Martini Glass. So some of these really classic, the balloon numbers, I mean, these things that most of us have seen, but if you've missed out on them, definitely check that out. That is something I am definitely going to be doing a future episode on, uh, outlining exactly which episodes you must, are like a must see before you start performing. So, um, in, if you're listening to this again in the future, you can definitely check in the show notes and I will link up to that episode once it is completed. So that's a great way. Of course, I'm not advocating that you steal ideas. We're talking about getting inspiration, right? If you listen to our episode uh, a week and a half ago with the Saucy Pear Cabaret, um, Jupiter Jove mentioned that he loved the classic champagne glass uh, act, and they decided to do a little play on that, a little uh, parody, a little tribute, an homage, but still playing with it a little bit with like a mini champagne glass. And so things like that, just the... Look at these classic numbers, not to imitate them or to copy them, but to draw some ideas, some inspiration, watching how they move, uh, maybe a certain costuming piece or something like that. 
So definitely start with those classic numbers if you have not um, watched them before or seen them before. That's number one, classic numbers. Number two, visit some local things like thrift shops, flea markets, antique stores, maybe some artisan markets, places like that with really unique items. You may not be using some old antique mirror in your act. It may not be the most feasible thing in the world, but going to these places might give you all sorts of new inspiration for a character. There's often a lot of unique characters at antique shops anyway, or a a scenario or a situation. And of course, if you're at a thrift shop, there's lots of amazing costume pieces and all it takes is one unique thing that can set your mind going. Definitely with a lot of these, if you're going somewhere specific, take a notebook with you and just write down every idea, no matter how crazy it may seem. I was just listening yesterday to, um, I believe it was Seth Godin talking, and he was talking about how he ha- always writes at least 15 ideas down every day, and the majority of them are bad, but you just got to still write them down. You never know what you can work with in the future. So that's number two are these places like thrift shops, flea markets, antique stores, artisan markets, things like that. Number three, and this is actually something I did fairly recently. I highly recommend watching shows like Dancing with the Stars or So You Think You Can Dance. Those two have become very popular here in the States, and I believe that there are equivalents in most of uh, most countries as well. And again, as I said with the classic numbers, I am not suggesting that you copy the, some of these dances. Obviously, these are copy, or these are choreographed routines and the, the intellectual property rights, artistic rights belong to those people. So do not copy anything. However, there are always elements. Every time I watch Dancing with the Stars, I see something new that I had, or, or I hear some new music that I, And often they'll do different arrangements too. So it's a totally different way of perceiving the music or perceiving the dance. And the way that they'll juxtapose things together is really unique. And it really, really gets my creative juices flowing. If you can, watch them with some friends that you can kind of on the commercial breaks, you can chat about some ideas. And once again, always, always, always have that notebook right next to you to write stuff down. Number four, (laughs) this is kind of a personal favorite, but I wanted to include it. I highly recommend checking out some of the old 80s fantasy and sci-fi movies. Depending on what your style of burlesque is, you could maybe adjust that to be a certain other uh, genre of film. But I find that the 80s and maybe the early 90s sci-fi and fantasy is just so awesome. They have so many unique characters and concepts and and these classic movies like La- like The Labyrinth, right? Shout out to Miss Adele Wolf, who's going to be on our show on Monday, and you'll hear about her and her love for David Bowie. But these movies that have become these classics and some that have been uh, more cult classics for other reasons than their (laughs) quality, but they'll have all sorts of really unique um, costuming concept ideas. And of course, you know, some of the synthesizer music, that kind of thing can be really, really interesting to play with as well. So definitely next time you're looking for a movie on Netflix to watch, try pulling up some 80s sci-fi and fantasy and just see what's there to inspire you. My personal favorite is Earth Girls Are Easy. Um, I believe this is the first time I've mentioned this on this podcast, but I have an un- unhealthy obsession with Jeff Goldblum. I find that man to be, no, it's perfectly healthy. He is just an amazing human being and everything perfect in this world. <laughs> and... um so I just love Earth Girls Are Easier with, with, with him and Gina Davis and Jim Carrey and uh, one of the Wayans brothers. I believe it was Damon. I'm not positive about that. And it's just so classic, campy 80s fun. Really, really great source of inspiration. But as I mentioned, films, I mean, you can kind of find specific genres, but try different ones, too, than the typical ones that you might normally be watching. The next one I want to talk about, this is number one, two, three, four... Five, I believe. Man, I'm losing count already. Number five, this one is to take a a trip to your local store or to just go on the website and check out some issues of National Geographic. Now, I want to say up front, I am in no way, absolutely not endorsing any sort of cultural appropriation. Do not do anything that could even remotely fall into that realm. If you, for example, if you are not a Native American Indian, don't do anything having to do with Native American Indian costuming or otherwise. Even if you are Native American Indian, it's probably best to stay away from that in general. 
However, as you're looking at these National Geographic, I mean, the, the photos in these articles are just mind blowing. They are absolutely gorgeous. And there are some really unique perspectives. To me, it's one of the best publications out there for getting a glimpse of, of different places around the world, different, um, not just people, but, but the natural phenomenons and things like that. So that's to, I think that would be a great place to just go and sit and, and page through some articles or scroll through some pages on their website to see what kind of inspiration you can draw from that. Number six is to attend music festivals if you're able to. Of course, many of my guests here on Burlesque Strip Down, when I ask them about what typically inspires them, talk about the music being one of the first pieces. And I think that's true for a lot of us. But we're limited if we only go with what we already know. We want to hear new different types of music and new things. So if you see any music festivals in your area, try to go. Even if you're not familiar with the bands or the singers, try to go and just see what's out there. If you've got fairly well-known artists at all, um, you can also use Shazam while you're at these festivals. Um, if you're not familiar with Shazam, it's a great app where you can just push the button and it will actually listen to the song that's being uh, played or performed and it will identify it for you. It's not perfect, doesn't work every time, especially for live concerts, but it can definitely help you out, kind of keep track if you miss the, the title of the song or anything like that. And then you can cross-reference on YouTube if you need to. But music festivals are a great way to expose yourself to new music in a in a very easy manner and a very, of course, very fun manner. It's a great way to connect with people as well. And there's often really good stalls as well on, on a side note for shopping. So you can often find a lot of really great um, costume pieces there as well. Number seven is to take some time and look through some old family photo albums that you have. Chances are good that no matter how stylish your grandparents were or weren't, they had some very unique clothes that were going on back in the day. And it's great to see those from real people and not just look for retro photos on the internet and things like that. To see these real legitimate photos of what people doing were doing, how people were dressed, and how they were kind of interacting as well. So take some time, dig out of the closet, the bottom of the closet, some of those old photo albums, or if you're like me and my mother, just the old photos, because we never take the time to actually put them into albums, uh, and have a look at those and just see what kind of inspiration you might be able to draw from those, maybe for a period piece or something else. Number eight, visit museums. I'm not always a huge museum fan. I'll, I'll be upfront about that. I, there are a lot of things I prefer to do when I'm traveling. However, some of the different forms of art can be great for inspiration. And especially if you attend these museums with the specific intent to search for inspiration, right? Um, don't just let it kind of happen if it happens, but go with a notebook with a page labeled inspiration and jot down anything that strikes your fancy. Number nine, of course, YouTube in general is a great place. You can get lost for hours at a time on YouTube. But what's been getting me lately are these mashups that they've been creating on YouTube. I first started getting into mashups with Glee, or the American TV show back in the day. Not back in the day, it was only a few years ago, but... <laughs> They started doing a lot of really awesome mashups between different types of songs. And some of them are just phenomenal. I love when, when, you know, acoustic music is mixed with metal music or, you know, rap with country or things like that. And there are hundreds and thousands of great mashups on YouTube. So next time maybe you have a song in mind, you can also just kind of search on YouTube to find various um, mashups that include that song and maybe something different to give your act a little more uniqueness. Number 10, this is more specifically to do with costuming. If you're in a fairly decent sized city, the chances are good that your city will have some sort of hair shows and makeup shows. If you're in the market for a new haircut, those are great places to go if you're adventurous and will let them do pretty much anything. You can usually get a free haircut out of the deal um, in exchange for your, you know, your modeling. But even if you just attend as a guest and get a chance to see what's out there and just see some of these these unique things, there are always some great concepts at these hair shows to check out. Um, along with that, there's always a lot of different conventions in some of the bigger towns. Me, uh, when I'm in the States, I'm usually in Orlando. Of course, there's a huge convention center there. It's a tourist destination. So there's lots of different um, conventions. Even if you can't actually go to the convention, especially for some of the more geeky ones or the pinup ones, just kind of going somewhere nearby 
uh, that, for example, the convention center in Orlando, there's a Denny's right nearby. And I cannot tell you how many times, okay, well, I shouldn't admit how many times I go, I've gone to Denny's. I really like Denny's sometimes. But, and for those of you out of the country, if you don't know Denny's, it's like a, a, a chain restaurant diner, basically. Um, so breakfast all day long, stuff like that. And there have been several times where I'm sitting at that Denny's or one of the other restaurants nearby and somebody walks in with just these random costumes on or dressed up in a certain way or with their hair styled a certain way. And you're like, oh, well, there must be some sort of convention happening. So even if you're just kind of hanging around that area, if there's something unique happening in your town, definitely check it out and have that notebook with you. Now, number 11 is going to sound a little bit strange, but um, if you're in America, you'll probably know where I got this idea because this has been um, the election season has already been heating up. So number 11 is to actually watch some political debates. Now, I know political debates usually aren't fun, or maybe they are really fun if you make a drinking game out of it or something like that, but specifically kind of be listening for certain issues that you feel very strongly about, especially if you're the type of performer that likes to make a statement in your acts, try to take some of the idea, you know, for example, um, sometimes there are candidates in a political, certain political debate that can say fairly ridiculous things. And those can be great jumping off points for a piece of satire. Or if there's an issue that you feel particularly strongly about, whether it's women's rights or uh, gay rights or something like that, the those debates can kind of bring some things up to the forefront. So just, you know, again, have your notebook and just as you're watching or if you're watching some highlights, um, just jot down things that kind of speak to you or, or that stand out to you. Number uh, 12, on a little lighter note, there's a great website that you may or may not have heard of, and it's called Stumble Upon. Stumble Upon is a website, and I believe they have an application as well, that basically you can put in some of your interests and hit the button stumble, and it will take you to a random website that has to do with that interest. So it's similar to something like Pinterest, I guess, or, or something like that, but for full on websites. So it's a really, really fantastic way to discover new sites that you may not have ever, ever, ever seen before. And that can lead, of course, to some great inspiration if you put in something like either something specific like burlesque or like dance or even bigger if you have a, you know, kind of a topic that you're thinking about, but you're not sure where to go with that. Number 13, there's a lot, uh, speaking of websites, there's a lot of different modeling and photography websites out there. So I highly recommend going to those. Once again, I can't stress this enough. Do not steal anyone's ideas, right? Especially photographers and, and models and things. I mean, they have, there are some really interesting concepts that are out there. Do not take them. It doesn't matter where they are in the world and where you are in the world and you think they'll never find you. It's not worth the risk. However, browsing some of these ideas, I mean, most of you know that's how the creative process kind of works. We see something and then we put our own kind of spin on it. So check out websites like Model Mayhem, for example. If you're a burlesque uh, performer, it's a great place to be anyway, to connect with photographers and other artists. Um, and specifically, spend some time just scrolling through and exploring some of the different pictures to come up with new ideas for what you may want to do for one of your acts. Number 14, next time you're in the car and you're not listening to an awesome podcast like this, of course, try switching to a random radio station that you've never listened to before. If you're like me, you kind of tend, I tend to either listen to podcasts or my, uh, my, the music on my phone or the same two or three radio stations in my area. So try just switching to something completely different, whether it's country, if you're not a country fan, or even something uh, classical. We have a we have a university radio station that plays a lot of jazz and classic music. Try something completely different. And then again, you can use Shazam on your phone to mark some of the ones that you like to save them for later. You can also do the very same thing on Pandora. You can create uh, radio stations based on based on a certain artist. So if say you, you like Katy Perry, for example, and you want to hear music similar to that, you can start with Katy Perry and then Pandora uses the music genome project to bring in other songs that have similar qualities. So it's a great way to discover new music. So listening to either new radio stations or something like Pandora are great options. Number 15, of course, just because we're burlesque performers does not mean we should limit ourselves to watching just burlesque performances. So when you're on YouTube, check out other dance styles, other performance styles, whether they're performance art pieces, even things like martial arts can be really inspiring in that beautiful way 
Um, and if you have the opportunity to go beyond YouTube and go to things in person, if you're in a city, never say no to an event. If something pops up and you're available to go or you get a free ticket, go. You never know what you might see. Inspiration, we can draw it from any of the performing arts and even sometimes things that we would might not consider art but can still inspire us. So performances, dance performances, musical performance, easy performances, even things like martial arts, bodybuilding competitions can be very inspiring as well. Now, number 16 is going to sound a little bit unique. I think it's very possible to draw a lot of inspiration from your Facebook news feed. Now, I'm not just talking about the idle scrolling we do when we're waiting for our, you know, for our food to be ready at the restaurant or when we're sitting before bed. Not just that idle scrolling. Again, this is kind of like purposeful scrolling, right? So I highly recommend next time you're kind of in the mood to inspire, to be inspired, take about 15, 20 minutes and go to your top stories in your newsfeed and start scrolling, but go through slowly and take a moment with each and every post or almost every post to really consider if there's any way that that conceptually or um, costume wise or music wise could be done in a burlesque number. You're going to come up again with a lot of bad ideas, but you may have a couple gems in there. So take that time to really take a second with each individual post, consider it and jot down any, any, any ideas that come into your mind. With number 17, I also wanted to talk about stories. And by stories, I'm referring here specifically to the written word. We talked about getting our inspiration from other dance uh, dance styles, from music and things like that. But also the written word, even though it's less visual than what we do in burlesque, can be very, very inspiring as well. So read as much as you can. Read some different stories, whether it's in things like the National Geographic that we talked about or other stories or full books, right? Take that time away from your screen to read an actual book. Listen to people's stories. Talk to people when you, when you meet, um, just the other day, I met a really interesting man who was bagging my groceries at, um, at the supermarket who had a really interesting story. Listen to those. Develop your, your mentality as someone who collects stories from people and collects these experiences because we are storytellers as burlesque performers. And in order to tell effective stories, we need to hear stories from other people that we can use in our inspiration and in our development. And of course, maybe if you're a writer as well, even if you're not a writer, try writing your own stories. Maybe when you're developing your act, if you have a character idea, write their backstory. Write a little, you know, 500, 1,000 word little story about where they came from and what they're doing and why they're in this situation. Take the time and, and really think of yourself like an actor, like someone who is developing a specific character that they want to portray on the stage. Number 18, start keeping a dream journal, right? I mean, our dreams are nuts. I mean, every morning I wake up and I'm just like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I don't have no idea what I'm, what my brain is doing at night. But every now and then there can be these really unique gems that we can take away from that. So start having a, a notebook by your bed. And the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is jot down some of those snippets that you might remember. Number 19, get in touch with your body. Whether it's taking dance classes, doing different kinds of exercise, yoga, meditation, having a lot of sex, masturbating, taking long bubble baths, whatever it is, really get in touch with your own body. Specifically at things like dance and yoga or even sex, you might find a certain way that your body moves that makes you feel really good. And you can use one move and build an entire act from that. So really being in touch with your own body, with yourself in whatever way makes you comfortable, but also pushing the bounds of your comfort a little bit as well can really help you to find new inspirations that come from something from a different place than just the music and the costuming and things that really come from an authentic inner place. And number 20, last but certainly not least, it's these interactions with our other burlesque performers. When you're, we've mentioned this several times, when you're at burlesque shows, watch other performers, get that inspiration from them. And if you have the opportunity, if you're within the same town as other performers, or if you have a troupe, 
Take the time to do a random improvisation session. When you're maybe all in the act creation mode, something where you're not rehearsing the acts you already have, but you're in creation mode. And just play a bunch of music and maybe dance around, try different movements, and try to do this with people that you really, really trust. Because you don't want to have to be afraid of looking silly or making mistakes or doing something ridiculous right? Once we can cast off those inhibitions, that's where we can create the most unique and the most fun acts. All right. So that is 20 different places where you might be able to find inspiration for your next act. What do you think? Were any of those kind of some new ideas? Have you heard them all before? Have you tried any of these before? Did you have specific luck with somewhere that I didn't mention? Lots of questions for you, and I would love, love, love to hear your answers. Let's start a conversation over on the show notes page. I've got a comment section just underneath the the post for this episode, and that's at burlesquestripdown.com slash inspiration. Um, or you can send me an email if you'd rather do it privately or give me any suggestions at velvet at burlesquestripdown.com. As I mentioned on Monday, I have an interview with the Oklahoma City queen herself, Miss Adele Wolf. And uh, we'll be coming at you next week with some more hot tips and everything as well. As a quick note, please also send me an email, that same email address, velvet at burlesquestripdown.com. If you have any events coming up, I've already posted a, a November event roundup, but I'll also be posting kind of weekly recaps of the things that are coming up for that specific week. So please do send me an email with anything from November or anything that's upcoming for December so I can go ahead and start getting that in the, uh, the preparation for the December roundup. Those are for any, for any worldwide events, shows, or specialty classes. Not the regular classes, but things like workshops and specialty classes. Thank you again so much for listening, and thank you in advance for sharing this with your friends, letting people know about Burlesque Strip Down, and for giving me any feedback that you have. I love to hear from all of you. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, a great weekend, great week, whatever day it is for you. Thank you so much for listening, and you make sure that you stay sexy. 